Deciding who will take care of your children when you're not around is a big task, but there are many things you can do before and after hiring someone to ensure that you have the best person possible taking care of your children. Yana Gregory, an attorney of our new, uh, from New London, is here to talk with us about what you can do legally to make sure that your children are safe in the care of the person that you are trusting. And this can be a really tough thing. Not everybody has uh, the convenience or just like that safe haven of having a parent or a grandparent or some sort of family member watch their kids all the time. That's right. So That's right. really, if if you decide to hire a nanny mm -hmm. yourself, what are some of the things that we should be looking for? Well, Rachel, there's so many things to think about. Everyone goes to the background check, the drug test, and credit check, but it's really you have to put them all together and look at the scope of everything you know, as a whole. There's not one definitive factor. So you definitely want to do the background check, mm -hmm. extensive interviewing. Another thing I suggest is look in the person's vehicle, see how it looks from the inside, if it's very sloppy. Um, credit check is important, and then the drug test. Mm -hmm. And now, when you bring somebody into your home. I mean, you think it's a good idea to kind of have them meet the kids first, see how yes. they interact. I really recommend a two-part uh, interview. Maybe meet them at Starbucks or a coffee shop in an outside environment without the children. Mm -hmm. And if they pass that one level, you can go straight to your house. So meet them maybe somewhere close by and then say, okay, let's go over to the house then. So some of the things are kind of personal, like asking somebody to take a drug test or asking somebody, you know, for a background check. Right. And people are like, well, I don't want to, you know, offend them or make them right. think that I don't trust them right off the bat. Right. How, how do you kind of do that? Well, you have to be very businesslike about it. You're an employer. Right. You're not a friend. And you're hiring someone to take care of your most precious items. So you want to just tell them right up front and be direct. This is what we're anticipating for you to have to do pre-employment. And by the way, while you're employed, we're going to require you know, drug tests going forward. And we may require other things of you to keep you um, to keep us abreast of what you're doing. And that's all legal to do Absolutely. all of that. Yes, as long as you inform them prior to employment and tell them you know, part of their employment is required to do these mm -hmm. things, then it is legal. What about a nanny cam setting up a camera mm -hmm. in the home? Are you required to tell them that there is one there? You are not required to tell them there is one there unless that camera tapes voice. Mm -hmm. So if you're recording sound, then you do have to inform them, which of course defeats the purpose of the nanny cam. Right. So you would want to just have a nanny cam that just shows uh, visual. And as far as using outside services, there are so many services that you can use. There's Care.com. There's other sorts of services. Mm -hmm. uh, do they kind of provide a little bit of assistance when it yes, comes to maybe I, the background checks? Yes, they do, Rachel. And you really want to use. I think I recommend those because you're starting out. You may not be in the employment. You know, mm -hmm. industry. So now you're doing a brand new job that you've never done. So care.com or any of those services and au pair, all of that, they vet them for you as far as background check and uh, different levels of security. But you still have to rely on your gut instinct and you have to do the interview. You have to know what's going to fit into your family. And there's also other legal issues too when it comes to payment because, yes, you know, yes. you can't just make cash payments all the right, time. You right. have to kind of get into the whole taxes yeah. and, and payroll. Yes. Again, that's part of now you're an employer. Right. You've got to pay workers comp. You've got to pay taxes. Um, there's there's concerns like that. What if the person gets injured in your home? So sometimes people feel more comfortable going to a summer camp for the summer and mm -hmm. all of these other uh, facilities are you know mandated by the state. The state is overseeing their compliance and you don't have to. As far as them driving your children around because yes. some of them it's driving them to school, driving them to activities. Mm -hmm. uh, do you kind of if you have the uh, the availability to put them in one of your vehicles is that safer than maybe one of you know their personal car? If you do put them in your vehicle, you've got to remember to add them to your insurance. So you want to make sure everything's legal and that they're covered while you're driving your vehicle. Um, but if they're in their vehicle, you want to make sure the vehicle's operating correctly and all the safety features are in place. So it is scary sometimes yeah. to have someone off and running in, in, with the kids in the car. Absolutely. And also, as far as the car goes, there's apps that you can use on your phone or their phone that will stop them from being able to use their phone while they're driving, and I would recommend you put those on there. Absolutely. Yes. Good stuff. Yes. All right, Yona, thank you so much. You're welcome.